Oh, jump over the... Did he see me? One sec, I'm going now. I don't think he saw you. Yeah, he doesn't see me. Rukon's doing something funny, for sure. Rukon's doing something. Do you guys want to... Do you want to act like it's normal? Do you want to walk somewhere? Do you guys want to come over? Oh, I saw him, but he just walked into the bush. <laughs> did you walk out of the bush? Yeah, I did. That's actually a reportable problem. That's actually reportable. <laughs> I think this ult is really good, yeah, by look the way. At, look at Kalista, like, she's throwing the flash. Yeah, getting fucked, getting fucked. Look at Kalista. Run, 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 run. Look, look at Kalista. Okay, Morgana's going in. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, uh, we are just dead. We have three wins! We have three! Not G2A, it's not G2A. Nice. It's not G2A, guys. Good job. C3 not G2A. We might be going home, but we beat you. True. That's true, actually. Oh, I'm so glad he said G2 and 8 himself, because we were talking about it during the cast, and I'm glad they got away with something as well. Also hilarious that Karzi uh, made the int play that saved level 1, because uh, they already knew he was there. Anyway, that was Silence of the Game presented by Bose. So that was from the last game of the Rumble Stage, Cloud9 versus Mad Lions. But now we're into two other teams who played the Rumble Stage. This is Game 2 of the semi-final between PSG Talon and Royal Never Give Up. To me, RNG the tournament favorites, and they're off to a 1-0 start. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, we see a lot of things uh, following through from game one into game two in terms of draft as well. Lucian Virus feel like they're gonna be permabans by PSG this series. Is Zoe gonna be a permaban on the side of RNG? Yeah. And another thing stays the same. We see PSG just saying, hey, you know, we, we don't really care about anything else other than this Udir, and they're gonna lock it in. So now, I'm wondering, do RNG just go back to that tried and true bot lane? They could, they can just pick up Kai'Sa Nautilus here. This is what they've traditionally done throughout this tournament if it is available. You can always pick your jungler later on, but instead, looks like they just want to confirm this Morgana yeah. right now. The, the the one difficulty if you do go Nautilus is if they take a mid laner, you're like, shoot, do we lose out on Morgan or do we lose, do we lose out on mid lane counter pick? So it, I think it is a judgment call in either way, but they go for the, let's just make sure we don't get pinched on something and just go and grab the rolls down the line. There's Nautilus grabbed on the Tristana side. I like that to cover Tristana's worst support matchup. Uh, I, we will wait to see what Ming wants to play himself, but Triss is going to be safe against almost all of them. Yeah, traditionally, right, this would expect it to be the Leona coming out. Leona having a, a bit of a stronger laning phase than the Nautilus, but Nautilus being more useful throughout the game. But one interesting thing we saw in game one is that Ming is not limited to any number of meta supports. Ming pulls out whatever he wants, therefore RNG are going to do it again. They're just going to take the uh, Nar this time around for Shahu now that the Lee Sin is banned. I would say this is probably Shahu's second best champion after the Lucian. Even if he falls down in laning phase, Shahu always finds a way to have massive impact in team fights when he gets Nar. Yeah, I would actually, speaking of like non-meta supports, I would not mind Morgana flexing support. The problem is you need a different good jungler to play. I actually liked Waze Olaf for what it's worth when he played it so far. Took out a couple of good also, wins. funny enough, stage. Yeah. Uh, Ming is historically a Morgana player, Free. Yeah. So it'd be even better. I know. I, we'll, we'll maybe see it one day. Obviously, I don't think it's going to happen, but it is a possibility, of course. There's, uh, of course, there's a very famous LPL championship where they won with Morgana mid yep. in Game Fabulous AT. So it's a triple flex. You keep it alive a little bit. You know, there's always the hope. You give the EDG throwback and you move on from there but it is the leona ban we expect to see if you're going via what he's picked most often there's two alistair games at msi uh, so a possibility there the question i have is do rng have the same level of kite back power that kept psg at arm's length in the previous game yeah, I, I definitely think uh, it's definitely in PSG's hands with what they round out with it. If they want to go for more of like a keeping range sort of composition, the Azir is still open for them if they want to opt into that. I would expect the Alistar here that you mentioned. I think for RG with the fact that you already have the Kaisu just uh, going into more dive and more engage would make a lot of sense. But no, RNG wow. want to go the opposite way instead. They want to put like appealing, very defensive support alongside this Kai'Sa. This is cool. Obviously that stat there is not updated live because we just saw Braum walk away with a win in the previous game, but I love this. I love RNG. What I'm assuming is basically doing prep against your opponent saying, you know, they don't play well or are, we're gonna line up really, really nicely when we have Braum locked in. This might be uh, opponent specific. It could even be a meta call. Like, no, Braum is actually just the best support in league right now. I don't know which one it is just yet. We'll see down the line, but I love that RNG have found something new to do. Nocturne gets grabbed on the PSG side. Problem is there is not a dive buddy for the Nocturne. Tristana's not really gonna reach. Udyr cannot reach. And so whoever he jumps on, like, Ming's gonna keep that man safe, no problem. Yeah, and you wonder what's gonna come out mid to go along with it, because you would expect Nocturne to go top against the Nar. It's a matchup we've seen many times. He is able to get pushed in that matchup. And there we go, Freak. We have the dive buddy right alongside the Nocturne. You even have some 
I'd say decent ultimates to take on the side of RNG, none like mm -hmm. S tier amazing ones, but jumping in with the Soul Shackles, jumping in with the Meganar ultimate definitely are gonna be nice. Yeah. And then on the side of RNG, I really expect this victory to be locked in. It's one of Kryon's uh, fallback champions and they do. So once again, RNG having this composition that plays really well over range. They have a lot of zoning tools that can keep you at arm's length. The one difference is Gala won't have as much of an easy time being able to hit frontline like he did last game. True. It's going to be fun to watch for, though. The Silas versus Victor going to be the 1v1 matchup in mid. Nocturne versus Gnar in the top side. This is going to be a new look. PSG have better engage buttons. Kaio Wing has a long range ultimate. What's nice is even though you can black shield that, you still force everyone else to move to the side for a bit longer than, say, with Leona. Even though it's still heavily telegraphed, yes, you can still block the primary stun. There's a bit more safety as well. Nautilus, of course, has ways out. Nocturne can dive in. Hanabi can be someone else to pull the trigger. And the fact that he's not waiting on a Mega Nar bar, that can, of course, help as well. So I'm expecting PSG early game to be strong as it was before, but I'm expecting also so that their mid to late game is going to have a bit more oomph because it was really lacking in game one. Yeah, that's the thing, right? At least we know this time if the game does go late that they have so many tools to engage, there's no way they just sit on those. So for the side of PSG, I definitely think we're looking at early and mid game picks, especially with that Nocturne Ultimate. And for the side of RNG, they're going to keep it tried and true to what we saw in game one. Yeah, a very similar composition. We are under the rift, though. Game two is here. RNG up 1-0 in the best of five. We are going to expect an early game lead for PSG Talon and better mid to late macro for Royal Never Give Up. We'll see if they can claim their second major international title by winning another MSI since a couple years ago. I think one good thing we can expect out from RNG this game uh, better than last game is I feel like their early game should be a bit more stable, right? You have the victor against the Silas, and you're going to have a very easy time in the first three levels. After that, it is a bit of a skill matchup. Can Maple find that? Abscond Abduct. He definitely also wants to be playing more with River to where Krine is more uh, self-sufficient. And I also think top lane is a bit uh, up and down. We've seen Shahu be the guy who continuously goes Hail of Blades on Nar pretty much any chance he can get. Sure, Hanabi should have an easier time pushing with his passive auto and his Q, but we know Shahu is going to be looking for blood. Yeah, it's really interesting to see his read on the matchup because in the one case, you're like, hey, I don't want to get poked out by like a little bit of Nocturne Q and you know, just getting the guaranteed poke is kind of nice, extra tank stats in case I'm getting dove. He's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to keep Hanabi from getting to attack the wave very much because he has to go full melee. He has to get all the way in. So I want to get the three autos off. I want to get hyper to proc and, and go from there. So I'm curious how much he's going to be able to stop him. Hanabi is going to catch the wave and make it push down. Uh, he is going to realize that Nar indeed is trying to leash topside. He will deny some gold, but maybe X. XP? I think, yeah, that's XP denial. I think just barely. Shahu should have zero XP right now, so will be late to level two. That is a nice play by Hanabi. Uh, obviously, he's not leashing, but doesn't need to. Udir is just soloing that side of the map. Yeah, true, and I think especially nice for Hanabi when he's probably been the most criticized player on PSG. He's had some good performances. One of his, his least in-game against RNG actually is a standout, and, and though it's game they won over RNG, but definitely considered the weak link of the team, though, to be fair, right, he is typically left on an island. We see PSG love yeah. to play around the bottom half of the map. But that also goes back to something you said in Drafted. I feel like this is going to be something new for PSG, right, is that you are now playing more with your solo lanes this game than we've seen all tournament long. True. They're going to be a really big deal. They are such huge playmakers right now. Bot lanes should be able to be left alone. That is one thing about Braum, right, is... Uh, you can't easily push in on that lane, and you're not usually getting attacked there either. Ming already on the way over, wanted to make sure there was no funny business with River counter jungling as he was in the previous game. Indeed, he was not. Sure, he misses out some local XP, but who really cares? He's not missing the cannon. So very smart move by Ming, very big brain player. It is just a full clear for River. Yeah, full clears coming out on both sides. We see that RNG does have both mid and bot prio, so this should be bot side scuttle crab for Wei. If River wants to contest the scuttle, he's going to have to run all the way back on the top side or could potentially look for recall and hope he gets back on the map quick enough because he's in mood yeah. here. And yeah, it's a... Uh, I wouldn't say a bit slower than I expected, right? Because sure, we expect PSG to want to get off the ground running in the early game, but it's not really in the first few levels when you do have an assassin in the mid lane. It is a bit more... You, you need to give him time. He needs to find that window to look for the all-in, but River Ooh, might look for a ward. Is it going to be enough? Maple's going to land oh. the first time. Will do flash follow? An early flash for Cryon. If River flashed, that man was dead. 
So a nice skill shot landed by Maple forces the flash out. And that's what the matchup comes down to. We said, hey, can Maple hit his Abscond of Duck after level three? Is he going to pair up with River? Does both of those things, forces the advantage in mid lane. And this is going to be even harder for Krayn now because, again, Krayn theoretically would want to bully this lane. As we see now, range versus melee. Very strong trading tools in both your Q and your E. Now isn't really going to be able to walk past the halfway point in the lane. If he does, he not only can get punished by River once again, but even Hanabi's getting close to level 6 point to where he can just start to ignore his lane a little bit, pushing the wave, and even just hovering into Fog of War around mid lane is going to put more pressure on Crying and give more room for PSG. Bit of damage bottom side. The stun comes back, though. Thankfully, a minion Secret Service blocks the W out of Gala, so it's a slightly weaker trade than it could have been. Maple able to walk back to mid lane. That is sometimes a rare treat for a mid laner. Ultimately, Kryon is not holding the wave as a freeze, nor can he hard push because he is out of mana. So Maple saves teleport, loses three melee minions, but now this wave's in a very good spot. And if he does want to freeze it, Kryon will have to teleport back. And also, like, right in a terrible spot for Kryon. We've already seen two minions already lost from the wave for Kryon. So going to fall down a bit on gold and EXP. Sure, he's up in the matchup right now, but again, it's as expected. Victor against Celis, range versus melee. And now we see uh, Dragon coming up in bot, lane, bot side. I feel like this is an objective that if PSG wanted, they definitely can set up for. Just once again, start playing around mid. Maybe Kai Wing on a recall comes and hovers and, and tries to give some pressure there and then start taking vision control as they're doing right now. I just gotta say, I'm really impressed by the fact that Maple had a lane where he was kind of losing it. He was getting pushed in early on. They got basically identical recalls off and yet Maple's the one who saved his TP. However, gotta point out Oblivion Orb done. Nice root, decent damage towards way. Black Shield is gonna block the anchor stun. And a, yeah, nice blast plant gets him away. Ignite burned by Kai Wing. But hey, you still force the man to walk out and that should mean a bit of dragon control. Yeah, exactly. I like that PSG are pretty much doing exactly what was textbook, right? They they set up the mid lane matchup early. They had the bot lane push. They didn't need to uh, send Kai Wing back. They just rotate him over immediately. Sure, you don't find the pick on way, but you get the objective. And now for RNG, I feel like once again, we want to keep our eyes on Xiaohu to be that early pressure point for the side of RNG. The question is, when are RNG going to start looking to, you know, maybe start split mapping, looking for more top side pressure? And then two, I also think it's very good that you highlighted the Oblivion Orb, of course. Uh, Getting the Grievous Wounds up against the Silas will be good, but still, I expect Mabel to have pressure in this matchup. He even could take the Victor Ultimate right now if he wanted and be up, you know, an ability on the Victor. True, yeah. Even just for a poke of nothing else, but there'd be there'd be nothing to play for, so you probably save that one until the Herald spawn in two minutes. I like the very early Dragon stack, by the way. I think one thing that hurt PSG was they were uh, slightly light on Dragons, and, and they lost one in the middle, which could have meant Soul earlier. Good smite by away, but now Black Shield early, popped by the W. Maple can stun, he's gonna land that. How about the rest of it? Does not ever burn ulti to chase any farther. I am curious why he wouldn't go for Soul Shackles, but maybe thought it wouldn't be enough damage with Crying Away able to answer. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised as well. Again, it, it looked like PSG this whole time were kind of posturing to set up for an aggressive player on the, the bot side of the map. They go for River Control once again. Can steal the Soul Shackles. I feel like you'd at the very least potentially be able to force the Flash out of way if you can then dodge the following binding but doesn't even want to risk it. The good thing about that though, right, is that now you have, I'd say another window to where you can look for a play on the top side. You already highlighted the Rift Herald being the next uh, point of action on the map. So Rift Herald's gonna be up in one minute. You still have the hijacked up on Maple. You have a pushing bot lane now as well. So it'd be very easy to get Kai Wing involved as Ming goes in, but yeah. this is gonna be this matchup, guys. Braum is gonna jump in, tag you with this passive. You're gonna kinda turn around and hit him and you're both gonna go your separate ways. Yep, yeah, good smart uh, play by Kai Wing as well. Walked up and then pressed E. The slow meant it was too much. Gala has no way to chase through a slow, but now an attempted tower dive. TD coming in. This is a big aggressive play. Flash then gonna land on the back line, but the shield is up, making Braum pretty tanky. Maple still on the way in, gonna take the kill on the Gala, and it's time to turn around. Absolutely beautiful. PSG Talent 2-0 on the dive. That is TP difference paying off. Yeah, great coordination coming out from PSG. The analyst desk was talking about this early in the day. Clemo was saying, hey, it's going to be a lot about finding if you can force these four-man dives up against RNG because RNG plays the map very wide. It's never about sending three to four members in one area, right? It's a lot about these isolated landing phases early on and then playing for the side lanes later. So we're going to get a replay once again here with how it sets up. River brings down the ward. We see Maple in base. He gets the stun on the Gala in that dredge line. It looked like it was almost out of range, but he does land it. Maple, of course, able to finish off Gala. And then Doggo easily able to find the kill on Ming. PSG also potentially going to turn this into a Rift Herald. They're going to try. And so rarely does RNG lose first Herald. It's why they have so many first turrets. Again, leading MSI in both of those stats. 
And despite the fact that all the pressure was put bottom side, they get to come back onto the map. They get the reset in time because the play was clean. And they get top priority as well. This is such a better early game than what we saw in game one. PSG are poised to push this one over the line. Yeah, definitely nice aggression coming out from them. Overall going to be a win, but still, RNG are getting something back as we now see on our screens. Gala should be able to pick up this first play. They denied some EXP because Doggo, Kaiwing, and Maple were all sharing EXP in the mid lane. So for RNG, I feel like you feel fine with this. You knew you couldn't contest them at that time on the map. And now the question is going to be, where do PSG want to use this Herald? You would once again expect it to be bought. I think there could be an argument to start maybe looking to play either towards mid or top because it's very easy for either solo lane to transition to the other one. Nocturne can always pivot out and around and start playing around that victor lane. Also, we've seen Silas has had Pryo this whole time. So if you want to gank the Snar, maybe get that first turret down top. Now Hanabi has a very uh, long lane where it can start roaming around the map and use that paranoia. That's going to be fun to watch for, absolutely. As long as he's not going to lose three turret plates for the play, obviously Xiaohu would love to just keep dealing damage. Even picked up a fairly early coal to stack up even more AD. That, of course, pay for itself and a bit more as, as that time moves on. Of course, feels very safe in his matchup. Knew it was going to be okay. Play picked the Gnar. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to farm against Nocturne. No big problem right there. Neither top laner has taken any turret plates just yet, but of course, you got that six CS lead for Gnar as they both walk back. Teleport not up for either one, but obviously easier to run with a Nocturnal than with a Nar one. Definitely, and you know, we see that PSG have pathed once again towards the bot side of the map. And, you know, I would expect them to use the Herald down bot, even if I would like to see use one of the solo lanes, just for the fact that they've already broken down two plates. It's going to be very easy for them to take that turret with a charge of the Herald and then Doggo hitting as well. Dragon also up in 30 seconds. Important to note, they still have Pryo all across the map. And then here is the cross map play that we know to expect from RNG. Okay, Wei is in, Xiaohu is Mega Nar, Hanabi forced to flash away, Nocturnals to make sure that maybe no TP follow, maybe they don't know where to throw the binding, he's gonna stay safe. That is flash ult down for the first gank. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a bit surprised. Uh, nice play coming out from RNG, Hanabi answers wisely, but on the bottom side of the map, we actually saw River go for a reset. You know, you know Wei is top, so I'm kind of surprised he didn't just want to hard force either the bot lane turret or even just outright start the Drake. Well, he's going to now. Drake spawns just this moment. Bot lane turret low enough that it'll die to almost just the Rift Herald charge. And I like this. He's being very off with his time. Get the dragons ASAP. You know RNG just have better mid game macro. The way to counter that is to go for a 22 minute dragon soul. That is a distinct possibility here. He's optimizing the dragon stacking. The turret is going to be easy afterwards. You can move the Trisana out of the lane. I love this adaptation in game two for PSG. Yeah, and I, I feel like a massive thing this game has just been off that, that early gank around mid, right? Because PSG have so many options just for the fact that if you watch the minimap, Maple is constantly just pushing and hovering towards the side that PSG are playing around. He is always in River. It's allowing River to play this aggressively. Their bottom lane is also doing phenomenally in the laning phase. They, they are up and Hanabi, you know, he's pretty much doing the job that he's been given uh, since he's been on this team, which is absorb the pressure, don't die, and we will find advantages elsewhere. And at fine advantages they have. 2,400 gold in 12 minutes is really, really good. The statistical average for RNG against the top five teams in the Rumble stage was down 700 gold at 15. By that point in time, they actually already turned the table against PSG. They had a lead in game one. I don't expect that thing to happen here. I expect them to have a much worse statistical early game uh, when everything kind of shakes out over the next three minutes. This is very good by PSG. And again, a lead they can carry over the line. The question is, you know, how long can they keep that one going? Is it going to be the Mountain Soul in time before RNG finds their big mid-game spike? And yeah, I feel like the way we want to see uh, PSG push that forward is they've already rotated their bottom lane up towards the top half of the map. Now, uh, push in with Silas mid, send River towards the top side, get some aggressive vision down there. You once again have both of your teleports up, so you can either try to force a dive, or even if you can't force a dive, zone the enemy bot lane off the turret, once again get more free gold onto Doggo, and it looks like that's what PSG are going to do. They're going to start controlling vision around top side, and I think we can expect to see more aggression put towards that turret where Doggo either gets plates or kills. Now Doggo, yes, up a Mythic, up Boots 2. That's really valuable here, and with River coming around, 
getting rid of some of the wards. Just use his sweeper to make sure there's no extra vision. He's like, okay, I want to make sure that you are safe. I'm going to make sure that you're okay to go for these plates. They are dropping in 45 seconds. So if you can earn 300 more gold just from killing two plates, that's basically a kill worth of at least gold income. Maybe not XP, but that's okay. As here we go, damage in the turret. Plate number one taken. Still 30 seconds. Anchor toss into a great double ulti. Huge damage and Ming just cannot survive that. Kai Wing coming alive in this one as well as Wei has TP'd in. The rest of the squad showing up as well. Nocturne ult to come for the re-engage. Reaper forced to run backwards. Doggo gonna get kicked right into the rest of the CC, but into the back line comes the rest of the squad. Two for one so far, but grab a third. Shaohu, what is that flash saving you from? There is no way you live. PSG Talon get a delayed ace more or less, and it's time to go for a bit more way on the way out. Ooh. Sad Maple not able to pick that one up, but you highlighted a freak, just amazing overall play coming out from PSG. And this is what you want to see especially, because I was a bit concerned when Maple and Hanabi held off on their TPs, but still, when all of RNG's, you know, quote-unquote frontliners, I guess Braum was already dead, but we're going to see here, backtracking a little bit of how it happens, we just see River walk up, we're going to see a dredge line come out, and he is just deleted from this Tristana and Udyr again. RNG is already channeling the TPs. Maybe they could potentially find something, but Shahu actually going to start chunking out River and they're going to try and all in onto Doggo. But PSG's TP location was just perfect. Hanabi goes in quickly with Maple following up. And this is where champions like Nocturne and Silas strive, right? Punishing immobile backline threats. The Braum was down. The Gnar was nowhere around to really try and zone, even though he probably couldn't anyway. And now this is the kind of gold lead that PSG need to start, you know, snowballing this game out of control. Yeah, they are clapping right now. They've gotten every objective. Keep in mind, a single death is the only thing short of a perfect game so far in this one. PSG, night and day compared to game one. I love it. I love seeing a competitive series. I want it to go to game five. I don't care who really wins at the end of the day. Second Herald going to be grabbed, no problem. That's going to mean a second turret dead almost certainly. We'll say, though, Xiaohu unanswered in the bottom lane. He's probably finishing almost the entire turret down there. But now that Silas is in, that is a very, very good Silas-sided matchup, especially with Xiaohu buying armor. Yeah, and you know, the thing especially, right, is he already has the Everfrost. We already see uh, Nocturne hovering around the lane as well. So this could be a play. Oh, River is Hanky enough. actually yeah. going to be just fine. But yeah, one play we can expect to see a lot throughout this game, right? It's just Nocturne hovering around the Silas lane and them looking for picks constantly. If PSG are ever in a position where they either don't feel like they can run into RNG or, you know, there's some kind of shenanigans around that, they will always have a way to find kills or find picks on the map to get pressure. Well, they'll see. See that pressure can happen because it's time to reset. It's time to get to the bottom side of the map. PSG cannot really afford, maybe at this point they're ahead enough, but cannot really afford to leave these dragons up. Let them be taken. Yep, here's the mid Herald summon. You maybe go for the mid wave if you feel safe in your vision, but you want to be on dragon as soon as possible. Maple finds the stun. Oh. Meganar into the wall. Look how easy it is. Maple slaughtering his side lane matchup. Now seven kills to one, 4,000 gold lead. Mid turret's about to die. Nocturne dives in for good measure, maybe more than is needed. The turret's still alive, but the stun sets up for two more. Rock jump looks for a third. This turret is gone, and so are RNG's chances. And PSG are making a statement out of this game too. Sometimes you wonder what teams, hey, how does a loss affect you in your in your first game of a best of five? Are you gonna let that shut you down? Is your momentum gonna get taken away? But I love Love PSG, they go back, they make some adaptations in this game. Again, they guarantee such an interesting draft that punishes the carries on RNG and Maple popping off with that solo kill. Soul point at 17 minutes, Freak. What can RNG do? They can do almost nothing. It's their turn to hide and say, ah, we don't have Priya, we don't have vision. The objectives are yours. Maple, this is beautiful. Yeah, goes in with the Abscond of Duck, takes away the ultimate, just lands it chained into the Everfrost in a WQ, and he's just deleted. PSG here, they don't even necessarily need Maple roaming over. They're able to just execute this, this dive so nicely. Hanabi starts it off, does get a bit chunked, has Stride Breaker, gets out of there, but Kryon's already chunked low. We already see the Morgana taken out as well. And I mean, this game so far has just looked so easy for the side of PSG. Really, really beautiful to watch this one happen, though. Their early game, heads and shoulders above what it normally is. They have continued to completely control this one. And we are still on our way towards, okay, maybe more like 23 minutes on this Dragon Soul. But 
if your only chance at winning was trying to one-shot somebody with a Morgue Binding or Victor and you're against Mountain Soul, that's not happening either. This guy has been just one-sided and it's beautiful to see PSG bouncing back from game one. Just kind of going to wait until the next big play because everything they choose works. And the thing is, right, I think this game is, is especially dire for RNG when you start looking at items because we still don't even have our Mythic done on way. Ooh, way though. That was so close. Mabel almost finding him in time. But yeah, every member of PSG, you know, barring Kaiwing having their Mythic done, already being even halfway through their next items. Yeah. Definitely feels like RNG are a long time away from being able to contest a fight. And guess what? You don't have a long time. You have three minutes and 25 seconds. Well, I do think we have, at least in casting terms, kind of a long time because I don't expect a team fight right away. That, that said, <laughs> RNG are defending bot lane tier two. You're gonna be so, proven wrong. Yeah. yeah. All right, we got a team fight right away. Meganar into the wall. I love the caster curse when it works this way. Noxon has dove right in, but it is RNG answering two kills back. The defense is solid. A turret is killed, but shutdowns are better. Now I can understand why you thought maybe a fight wouldn't break down right <laughs> away. PSG's members jumping into RNG. RNG were, were waiting with arms wide open. They punish. PSG maybe just getting a bit too ahead of themselves. They do of about a, a six a five to six k gold lead but still the follow-up wasn't necessarily there we're gonna see more in depth what actually happened he goes in finds the gnar ultimate and we see a nice job uh, by ming actually keeping away multiple members from the side of psg doggo got exhausted kai wing forced back and that pretty much left a 5v3 on the opposite side of the turret yeah i mean when, when they're ready when they're able to defend themselves when kai's gonna backwards those are your only two divers. Trisana's not jumping past that turret to go in for any more damage, so didn't have the way to finish the kills off. You're only a one item. Silas at that point in time, so not enough damage. Smite fight, yep, walks in. Nicely done right there. Again, yeah, the team fight wasn't great, but the gold lead is still massive. It's 5.5 thousand. That is a lot, if any fans of EU will tell you. That is 5.5K, and that is good. If you understand the reference, I'm proud of you. The important thing, is we're two minutes away from Dragon Soul. More Boomer esports stories with Yes. Link, but another really <laughs> important thing on the map, actually, is Maple, after that death, was able to finish his Zhonya's. And Zhonya is definitely one of the most important items on Silas. Lets you get through another rotation of your spells, you know, another massive heal coming out from your W. So I, I feel like in this next fight is where we're really going to see PSG shine through. And to be fair, it makes you wonder if RNG will even contest. You feel like they have to, right? It's Soul. There's no way you don't contest Soul, but I feel like <laughs> I was the, say that. the last game <laughs> might have taught us otherwise. That said, I think RNG clearly not gun shy. The fact that they defended bot lane tier two and then it worked was definitely impressive. I thought that was a gimme and, and I was wrong. That was obviously a very good defense but we just count on the timer. This is really what the game is about right now, is, is prevent the Baron sneak, which, hey, there are, what, two wards in that area to make sure it's not going to happen. Good, check, that is that box covered. And then control this part of the jungle, right? Walk in with Sweeper, get rid of these wards, make sure that this path cannot be taken without face checking an Udyr or a Nautilus. Good black shield by way, but this is gonna be really good damage. First shot crit, pretty good stuff. Three item Tristana already. And I don't know how you can test this dragon. You don't have vision, you don't have gold, you don't have the health bars. There's no way this works. And you don't, right, you don't have TP on Victor. If Hanabi wanted, he could even just keep pushing topside because he has TP. He can make it to the play anytime he wants. So RNG, no matter what, are going to have to lose something somewhere. And we've already seen, right, Gala tried to get in position to do damage once Wei hit that binding on River uh, when they were trying to aggressively force plays. But you're a Kai'Sa. You, you don't have the range to really find that chunk. And when you do walk up too far, PSG will punish you so psg definitely playing by the book they have pushing lanes on both sides they're controlling mid they have vision so now all i gotta okay. do is wait for rng to walk into you here we go this is the moment three spotted couple of wards for safety frontline aggro comes across nocturne oak comes in frontline stun again very Ooh. low on nautilus but already they've shut down man kai wing he's gonna stay alive he kites the gravity he kites the ulti but there's oh. two kills the back line dive is not good enough psg talon once again find ways to not go for dragon soul you gotta be kidding me and i was completely surprised Vic. freak you thought everything was in psg's favor they're looking for the engage but Doggo not able to follow up with damage. Maple and Hanabi going in as that double diving squad, just getting pretty much instantly taken out. I'm not sure how this happens again, but I am sure we'll find out how in the replay. Oh my gosh, yeah, we are. Uh, PSG had the vision advantage, 
and chose to not play with vision advantage. They chose to take a team fight straight up. And look, you're supposed to win that team fight. You're up in gold. But why even take the risk? Make them face check you. Yeah, you, right, you have everything. Vision, pushing side lanes, control mid. We're going to see here they go for the all in. Again, Maple and Hanabi jump in. Doggo just focusing down Xiaohu. Xiao jumps away, finds a massive Gnar ultimate. Yeah. And yeah, just I'd say a nice job by Xiaohu kind of keeping their attention. Of preventing Doggo from walking yep. forward. And then the other members are just like, hey, we're just going to focus down Maple and Hanabi. And like you said, even regardless of that fight, PSG never had to go for that. They had everything else in their favor to not have to fight. Yep. But uh, yeah, you know, it, it, it happened. Freak, yeah. it happens. So what it looks like to me is the backline dog doesn't have enough damage ultimately, right? I don't think Maple's wrong by going Zonia second and, you know, otherwise a little defensively, but Hanabi and Maple cannot one-shot Kryon. They cannot one-shot Gala. Gala just ults out after auto-attacking once, and Kryon, every five minutes, has to burn Flash, whatever. But now you've got two divers who are like, well, who do we have? It's it's the John Travolta meme, just like, wait, where are we now? And then Meganar just like ults you into the wall. That's happened both times that they've dived, that they've dove, whatever, how you want to conjugate it. They have to stop doing this. Like, if it's a five on five, you cannot dive the back line. They've got enough peel. That It's going to be enough. If you play front line, front line, you've got a three and a half item Trist. That's fine. Do it that way. Yeah, definitely agree. And you know, the thing is, now you're just giving RNG more time to get more items, more gold. Sure, they are still 6K gold behind. Everything is still in PSG's favor, but it is a nice adaptation by RNG to realize how they need to be taking these fights, how they need to like, okay, we let them dive in. We have our Braum peel. We have our Nar peel. It's not necessarily about us finding our way onto the Tristana. It's about us keeping our carries alive. Yep, as long as PSG are going to throw their front line into you, you can kite your back line and then start dealing damage to them five versus two. That part has worked pretty well, but if River and Kai Wing are able to tank, and set it up on the front line. I don't think you can outrace the Tristana damage. So we'll wait for the next time this happens. Three minutes to go until Mountain Soul. Of course, the Baron is alive. PSG, as you mentioned, still with a huge gold lead. It's now 6.2 thousand. Yes, indeed, it has been kind of growing over time. They're going to get rid of the vision again and make sure that there's no cheeky plays available. Doggo even already has Lord Dominic's and sitting on another uh, BF sword on top of that. So definitely going to have no problem with shredding through the tanks. Sure, Shao has already picked up his Randuin's Omen, but I still feel like the damage from PSG is outpacing that. They still have control of the side waves. They're still controlling vision. Now it's going to be about, hey, are they actually going to force this play? Looks like they will. Again, you don't necessarily need to try and rush down the Baron. You can just try to force uh, RNG out, try to find a pick that way. Looks like they also okay. have position in top tri brush for a flame. Well, chance at a smite fight. So far, River has been better at it, but there's always a time for round two or round three. Maple winning the wings has Meganar ulti. That's going to be a big concern. 4K health. Here comes the back line. It's going to be knocked up into the air, and they have deleted Xiaohu pre-Meganar. This is the fight they needed. A flash to safety for Hanabi stays alive. Attempt from Morgana. Burns a stopwatch. Oh. Gala cleans up one. Way gets away from Everfrost, and Nautilus is running low on health. But the dive. There is a fed Tristana. Mal fights in. Cannot find it, but he does get the kill in the end. Mal fights back in, gets the kill. Ignite is not enough. Who cares that he's stunned? Doggo does it best. And Doggo definitely isn't gun shy this game. It's so nice to see PSG actually aggressively pulling the trigger. They say, hey, we're going to start this Baron. We're going to force them into us. And again, unfortunate for Xiao, gets instantly deleted by the members of PSG. This is going to be a Baron, and especially when you have the composition that's also controlling the side lanes, it's going to feel so bad for RNG. This timing could not be better. They're going to wait two seconds for Hanabi to respawn. River grabs the smite. Five-man Baron buff. Red Bull Baron is on, and they should get so much out of this window. Yeah, and we're going to see here Xiao stacking up his, his rage bar. Kaiwing goes for the engage, and on the opposite side, Xiao goes in, but Maple takes his Perfect. ultimate, stuns him. He is instantly deleted. Hanabi going a little bit too far. I kind of thought this might be where RNG come back when Gala made this play. But Doggo not being gun shy, Maple jumping in as well. Doggo flashing in to follow him. And this is what we need to see, right? This is what we were waiting to see and hoping to see in the last game of like, hey, you know, at least try. Whether you win or lose, you know, we need to see some aggression and playmaking coming out from PSG. It makes even more sense when you're 7,000 yeah. in the lead, though. I would be that hyped as well. Five health remaining under Tristana. That is the reason why you were able to win the team fight, or at least clean up the rest of it, and get the Baron. Maple, though, MVP of that fight for yep. completely locking up Nar and never letting Xiao Hu do anything. Huge on that side. Hanabi now on split push. Again, they waited to give him the Baron buff. That one's huge as well. And now, Mountain Soul is on the table again. 
PSG, please get yourselves in the river and make this one happen. Here comes a Nocturne ult TP. They're going to dive right on in. Can RNG find a way to win? I don't know how they're going to. Nocturne's frontline burns a stopwatch quickly. When the re-engage comes in, he jumps out for dear life. Now River's on the flank. Doggo hitting the dragon. Rocket jumps away from Braum ulti. Deals oh, the damage. Mountain it. Soul is claimed, and they found the stun. One for one so far with the chase down. How good is it that Gravity Well is going to disengage pretty well? Maple wants in, though. Finds his stun. Meganar again. Finds the kill. A double. And now Cryon. He's just going to be doing exactly that. A big Meganar. And oh, wow. Maple gets the chase down anyway. Four kills to one. PSG Talent are ready to take the base. Yeah, PSG Talent, they have Soul. They have Baron. They can just push through and end it. PSG showing, hey, you know, they might be an underdog, but this series is winnable. Yeah, it is. What a slaughter of game two. A thing of beauty for 99% of it. Maybe one mistake, but otherwise, it has been all PSG talent. Royal never give up. We're going to lose game two. It has been won by PSG. A beautiful set of dives, a beautiful set of plays, and it's a 1-1 scoreline. And this is just what we wanted to see, right? We highlighted it earlier, Freak, of like, hey, you know, PCS, LMS, they've really never gotten, they've actually never gotten past the first round of bracket stage, unless we're throwing a TPA from season two, but. Yeah. Which was a GP, which was a GPL, it doesn't count. <laughs> yep, there we go, we're still right, but this is definitely the time where PSG can show up. Massive performance from Maple, and once again, Doggo, the substitute in the team, amazing to see him really stepping up to be the, the main damage dealer of this squad. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. Uh, and, and everyone really got it over the line, right? Again, sure, you could criticize a couple of the dives, but there are zero teams where every play is perfect. You can look at any game from any team from any championship, even if they win the whole thing, you're like, oh, well, that one is a little suspect. This was beautiful. The fact that Maple got TP difference in mid and used that to 4v2 bot lane three minutes later, that is the exact kind of play you do not see punished very often. You do not see that capitalized from even the best teams in the world in every game. That is what set things up. Bot lane got gigantic. It got pushed around the game. Beautifully done. Now, as we go to break, let's find out how PSG Talon chose their team anthem for MSI 2021. Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin. I'm the PSG team. Our name is Centuries, and the is Fall Out Boy. Why do we choose this song? It's because we want to remind the fans and the players that we have to remember the name of PSG Talon for a long time. We choose this song because we have been playing at MSI at the beginning of the MSI, until we now have to take the RNG 12-year period and take the RNG. Meta 的复仇都成功了，我相信上面的事情都已经足够让观众去很深刻对记得我们。如果我们真的很幸运的能够拿下了冠军，我相信大家都会记得我们一辈子。
on to the State Farm Analyst Desk. PSG Talon, they came back in game two with a dominant win in today's semifinal. I think we said it after the first game where they beat RNG in, in the Rumble stage. You know, they beat them by just playing nuts, like always going in, getting the early advantage, and always pushing their advantage. We don't talk about that mid lane score ruffle that almost yeah, yeah, like, yeah, turned the game one. around. <laughs> we don't talk about that yet. But, you know, that's exactly what we wanted to see out of them. Yeah, 100%. We wanted to see a world where River's able to fully influence the early game. Because in game one, right, he got a couple of ganks off, got some kills. They were important, but it wasn't like he was able to break open the game. But in this one, he started getting the rest of the team involved, teleporting off of his plays, looking for the turret dives, which are are so crucial to shutting down RNG. And Clement, as we look at this first replay where they do go for the all-in bot lane with the teleports, is this like vintage PSG or is this like an adaptation they made because they're playing RNG? Honestly, this is just the Flash Wolves bread and butter play, <laughs> 4v2 into the bot lane. They take this strategy to every single other team they go to, FPX, PSG, they're all the same. They all have this as their bread and butter. And this really came from the first three minute gank coming in from uh, uh, from Udyr. It was, it was a really peculiar gank because he was actually spotted on the ward. RNG knew the path he was coming for and crying saw him backed off and then walked back in for a minion. So it was kind of a bit of a throw that really led to this snowball. And it just shows you how much PSG can snowball off the smallest of mistakes. I think they also identified the fact that from the experience in that game one and also the other games that they've seen RNG play, that when you have that advantage, you have to keep it going. So immediately they transition it then into a top lane fight to get the pressure there. Yeah, and I think that again, PSG are just so quick on the ability to say, we're going to TP in and look for a fight. I think that was a little bit more of the bot lane, which no RNG fan wants to see more of that and, and ultimately <laughs> exactly uh, and, and ultimately like what you can see from this play it's it's initial like a, a very good pick the PSG get then RNG say wait a second let's TP in guys they're overextended we can fight but Nocturne ult before popping the teleport makes everything go dark then he's able to instantly come off uh, use that range Silas is right there beside him I think PSG just played a very fluid a very quick to react game and in two or three plays like this they'd instantly blown it wide open Yes, it was. And uh, we looked at the Morgana. It was still left open again, and they let, let RNG pick it. But now we saw a bit of an adaptation in the draft. And River again going for that Udir. Now, you put him in your all-pro team saying you was the best jungler to come out of the Rumble stage. Uh, what did you think of his performance in this game, and how influential is he going to be if PSG want to beat RNG? This Udyr pick is just absolutely massive. It's the tier one. We see Canyon prioritizing this Udyr over the likes of uh, the Rumble and the Morgana as well. And it's just because you can level three invade as we saw in game one, red side clear straight into blue side invade. It makes sure that your mid lane actually has priority and you get off to a good start. So I think this is going to be the consistent factor here. If Udyr is left open, you're gonna see River on Udyr. But he needed someone to finish the work for Rivers setup, and that was Doggo, our Oppo player of the game. And I have the president of the Oppo fan, uh, the Oppo fan club, Woo, the Doggo me. fan club, <laughs> with me, who's been singing his praises even before. I mean, we okay, the game. watch this from Doggo. Like, this is full aggressive dog we wanted to see. And initially, uh, we have like some really sweet plays from him where he's able to, I believe, watch him half range W away to get out of the Morgan ult. Now he's ready to come in with his flash because he realized he's too far away to start auto attacking. That unlocks his W. And I mean, look at this. He just keeps jumping in over and over again on zero HP. He does not even care. The man has no fear whatsoever. <laughs> and this is what I love to see. Yeah, Doggo, uh, he, we know how aggressive he likes to be, but this is something else. And I mean, they also had a dicey team fight in the mid game, so they did have to keep the pressure up and he played the role perfect. And honestly, like I, I know Kai'Sa a huge power pick of this tournament, but for me, when it comes to Doggo, I think his Tristana is the bread and butter. Like we've seen it, uh, we saw it from him when he played against PSG in the finals against, uh, against P PSG in against the PCS PSG, yeah. finals. Yes, exactly. Uh, and we've seen it a couple times so far this tournament, I think that when he is able to build a lead on Tristana, it's his best champion for ballooning that and being able to close out and carrying the fight. Well, let's take that pick then and pull up the draft once again, and I'll look into the games that are going to come next, Clement, because we saw this already. PSG was able to beat RNG in the Rumble stage because they did this. They kept fighting and they kept pushing their advantage, but RNG came back and they adjusted to that. So how do PSG um, avoid that from happening in game three? 
So in this draft, PSG is trying to solve the problem of how do you play pick composition. They drafted the Nocturne that can fly in from any angle and Silas that can actually split push against most top laners if fed enough. I think what RNG are going to do is actually change some of their bans. I don't know what's happening in scrims, but a lot of teams have been banning Renekton and Thresh versus PSG, oh, even though they've only picked it twice so far. So there is something that is happening behind the scenes that is holding back from RNG, and I think they can drop the Jace pick and ban Nocturne instead. Jace does not have the same level of uh pick potential that a nocturne has once rng switches those up a little bit drop the renekton and the jace i actually think they're in a much stronger position and i just feel like this draft was a bit of still testing the waters and uh, going off that game one win that they already had padded yeah, RNG also chose blue sides. So they're going to be back there on the side that has gotten both the wins so far. And ultimately, for PSG, what needs to continue for them is champions that can decisively engage and find fights. That's why I think the Nocturne was so good because, you know, the Gnar was waffling around on the side <laughs> looking for flanks, like couldn't really do Just anything. The Nocturne immediately can go in whenever they decide. I think the Silas too, so good because you can also engage like an Azir, but you also have the ability to go hard in a side lane and look for skirmishes and fights. So these types of champions, not necessarily the same ones, but that direction is what PSG have to maintain. Don't overcomplicate it for yourself and make sure that you have those engages. PSG talent are looking to make history as the first PCS team to reach the MSI finals, but they have a lot of work to do. Overall, PSG is looking solid and setting us up for a great rematch. Doggo is still able to kill off Ming. Doggo is now dead, though. Gala dived onto the back line. Kai Wing trading back into this. I guarantee that they will take a game off RNG in this series. Gala gets blocked tower because they didn't. Oh, Blabber just dies to Xiaohu. It's difficult to see them doing it multiple times. 